Hey there. Um, so I'm pretty frustrated that I'm not able to attend the meeting uh, today, but I wanted to get some thoughts to the group. So I'm recording a video. Um, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to uh, read the presentation I'm working on. So I'm working on a set of videos to give to parents who want to do structure word inquiry with their kids um, to back up what we're doing at school. And uh, so first, I'm going to read that because I think it's a really good introduction. And then I'm going to take you through my own, you know, so far systematic way of, of doing this with kids. It seems like everybody's like, where's, where's the lesson plan? And you can follow very specifically what Pete Bowers has in the Teaching How the Written Word Works book. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of people find that too open. Uh, it's hard to figure out where to start. So anyway, this is what I would have said if I could have been there today. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So, uh, okay, I keep talking about morphology. What is morphology? Well, morphology is the meaning-based structure of words. That is to say, prefixes, suffixes, and bases, and the rules for connecting them. That's morphology. Um, the problem is we tend to teach spelling based upon pronunciation, but that's not the fundamental organizing principle of spelling. Meaning is the fundamental organizing principle of spelling. And the fundamental units of meaning are morphemes, prefixes, suffixes, and bases. If students were taught to notice morphemes first when they see words and to consider pronunciation second, English would seem far less insane. The fact is, if you study morphology enough, you can see this for yourself. You can feel this for yourself. Spellings that make no sense pronunciation-wise will make perfect sense when analyzed morphologically. The problem is, because we're not taught this way, the profundity and value of this view of spelling is not at all obvious at first. So here are five stumbling blocks I encountered along my journey here. First, um, morphology doesn't give us what we're used to getting from spelling. When we ask, what is this word, we're accustomed to getting the pronunciation. The meaning is a separate question that has been largely artificially detached from the spelling. This is madness because words are made of meaningful parts and the spelling rules for connecting those parts are startlingly consistent. Um, two, spelling rules are taught as they relate to pronunciation. For instance, doubling of a consonant is related to a short vowel sound preceding the pair of consonants. Yet there are morphology-based reasons for these patterns which are much more consistent than the pronunciation-based reasoning. So breaking the habit of justifying a spelling based on pronunciation can be challenging at first, but it's really important. Uh, most of us have been exposed to a study of morphemes as an advanced approach to identifying big words with Latin and Greek roots. So we have a preconceived notion that phonetic decoding is the stepping, stepping stone to such advanced things. This is arbitrary and wrong. Decoding and encoding are morphophonemic processes, ideally. We need to learn both and both can be taught at all levels. The kindergartner can easily identify the morphemes and their function in run, runs, running, and runner. They can also begin to intuit the consonant doubling rule if we show them the words, if we show them the words and they know the alphabet. It, another thing is that it, first, it didn't seem universally applicable. It seemed like this is a, an interesting thing, but it, it's not applicable to every situation, because we often encounter situations when we first start doing this, where we're not sure what to do. And that's especially true because of all the Anglo-Saxon bases that seem to defy logic pronunciation-wise. But that isn't a fair expectation. Morphology doesn't replace an understanding of phonics. Instead, it teams up with the study of word origins and the study of phonics to give us a far better approach to basic reading, in, in my opinion. Um, Though the morphological approach simplifies spelling tremendously, it has its own rules to remember, as well as exceptions. So at first it feels like adding more crazy to the crazy of English spelling, especially since we've all learned from pronunciation-based spelling, sounding it out, that every rule implies a million exceptions. Well, so far in my morphology study, exceptions are actually very rare and they're never random. They relate to the word's origin and when studied, this story makes the spelling much more memorable than having it on a word wall as a sight word or a red word. Rules wise, here's the deal. Learn three rules for attaching morphemes to one another. 
and you'll be able to spell hundreds of thousands of words if you learn to spell only about 150 morphemes. So you learn 150 morphemes, you know, basically two to six letters, which most of my dyslexic students can do. And uh, you learn 150 of those and then these three rules and you can spell hundreds of thousands of words. And my students who have never been able to deal with spelling embrace this, they're excited by it. It's kind of crazy. Um, so here's a sixth thing I said, uh, the change in perspective is nuance. Sounds is nuanced. Sound symbol correspondences do need to be learned, just not without the meaningful context of the morphemes they inhabit. Etymology is complex, but in the context of a morphological view, this complexity is interesting and helpful to memorizing unusual words, rather than more proof that spelling is crazy and impossibly inconsistent. So here's the big picture. English spelling is much less crazy than it seems, but we have to learn a new way of analyzing words in order to see and teach this. Dyslexic students are deprived of their greatest cognitive strengths when words are artificially reduced to collections of letters for analysis. Adding morphology and etymology to language arts from the very start enables dyslexic learners to employ their strengths, often including deduction, inference, and narrative-based memory, to overcome their challenges, in particular this one challenge with phonetic decoding. Educators who want a program or a system for teaching are often quick for teaching are often quickly frustrated in the study of morphology. I think the key is to understand that you probably have to be a student of morphology first. Set aside notions of teaching initially because you don't know the material well enough to teach it. I certainly didn't, unless you went to a very unusual school. Once you have begun to see words through the lens of morphology, teaching it is a much less daunting task. To be fair, Pete Bauer's structured word inquiry method overcomes this hurdle in a way many teachers might be able to emulate. The teacher is learning with the students. So a confident teacher can absolutely model the joy of not knowing, the anticipation of learning more as you try to find out, and possibly the joy of finding out. But I think this is a special kind of teacher. My hope is that every teacher of English and parent of a child who struggles with spelling or writing fundamentals will do this. Learn what you weren't taught. Spend a few hours learning some basics of morphology first word attack. Teach students of all ages what you have learned. Study morphemes with them. Build words with them. Explore words with them. And hopefully reach a tipping point at which educators cry out for fundamental change of language arts curriculum to place morphology at its rightful place at the foundation of spelling and reading, just ahead of, but never replacing phonetic decoding. English spelling is morphophonemic, not phonetic. Okay, so perhaps that's not the right order to go in. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna bounce out and talk about my uh, the, the program I try to do. So let's see here. Hopefully I can cut this part out. All right, that's hideous. Uh, here we go. So I think this will work. All right, okay. So what's going on here? So my goal is morphology first word attack. Um, and what do I mean? I mean that students are basically taught to look at the letters and identify the sounds. And if you do that, you end up with a bunch of sounds. You may recognize the words, you may not, but you don't necessarily have any idea what it means, even if you decode it correctly. If you're looking at morphemes first, you're starting with meaning. And how often are we reading aloud for learning? Uh, much less often than we're reading to ourselves. So the meaning is logically a great place to start. Um, let's see, I can actually put myself in here. Hello. Um, so um, let's talk about the ingredients of this program. Oops, that didn't work, sorry. So of course, Pete Bauer structured word inquiry.
And um, so I use the IMSE Orton Gillingham morphology structure, which I found to be really great. Um, they have this thing called the three part drill, which is, you can't really see it, but you can tell this is highly used and beat up. Um, and they also give flashcards, which I think are great. There's stuff about syllabication that I find extremely problematic because we're basically teaching kids a made up system and then later replacing it with this system that actually is the way words are divided up. Um, I don't know if everyone knows syllabication the way most of us teach it was invented by Noah Webster in order to uh, have words divided up in his dictionary and it's arbitrary. Um, so I have to use my own parts of speech lessons and practice um, and I use the Quizlet for home study and I also use Gina Cook's, oh, I didn't finish that, that's funny, um, Matrix books. There are two of them, I think, maybe three. I think they're great. Um, so I'll just make this all visible. <laughs> so the basic sequence. Uh, first, I introduce the vocab. Morpheme, spaces, and affixes, prefixes, and suffixes, et cetera. Um, then a lot of kids, I need to backtrack and make sure they know parts of speech because a lot of suffixes uh, they, rather than having an obvious meaning, they have a part of speech. They change the part of speech. And that's, I, it feels like that's the best way to understand them. Um, and if you don't understand parts of speech, you can't really do that. So uh, depending on how much the kid needs variety, I might do that simultaneously with teaching them the three basic connection rules because the basic connection rules are more inquiry-based so they're more engaged in the process. I give them a bunch of examples and then we look for the patterns and then they can eventually see the rules for connecting morphemes. And there really are uh, three basic ones that account for a lot of uh, a lot of the connections between morphemes and words. And then we introduce matrices, matrices and we start using etymology, for, especially for the words that, you know, it's just a base, but the spelling seems crazy. Why is that spelling that way? Um, and this is annoying. Um, and then we keep doing it. We, we do various text-based tasks that they would have to do for school. And when they come across words they don't know, they probably start sounding them out. And then if they, depending on how well they do, we I switch them and go, hey, so do you see any more things you recognize? And eventually they start doing that first. And it's much, much faster and more useful for them generally. Um, and then basically they need to learn, you know, at least those first 130 morphemes, which seems like a lot at first, but it's really not. Um, and we use flashcards and Quizlet to do that in an ongoing way, as well as continually using word attack, exploring new bases um, and assembling words and decoding words. So that's that structure. Um, back to the other thing. So let's see. This might not be. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that for later. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'll send the videos when I've made the rest of the videos because this is too complicated if you're just reading it. Um, anyway, I hope that I hope that's useful, folks. I if I can be a participant, I'd really love to. Um, Thanks. I hope, you know, no worries if no one has time for any of this. Here's.